Guess I'm gonna go see Grant. And we got some coffee. Interesting. People send me stuff all the time. Just bogey. <laughs> I already knew it. This one's right, you. I definitely want that. Yeah, that one's you, for sure. You like this one? That's actually Yeah, nice. but that might be a little small for me, actually. It's actually pretty cool. Yeah, it's motivation. Oh, wait, this one is small. Austin, mm -hmm. that you're is a, a small. That is, I'm a large. No, you're not. Yes, you're I am. Two, you're 120 pounds. I'm There's a large. No way. I'm a large. <laughs> I'm a large. You're I'm not a large. large. I could put my two fingers around your bicep. <laughs> like, I am a large. you're not a large. <laughs> All right. I feel like Master P. Okay. Right. Here we go, baby. You going fishing? No, I'm going. I don't know where I'm going. I'm going in a rap video. All right, All Stars. At the next event, we're going to get some different swag going on. We went back to my baseball roots and we're getting some jerseys. And then we've got the bucket hat because everybody needs a bucket hat. Nobody's giving that out. So make sure you show up to the next event. So he's going to do a thing in Miami completely free of charge. Um, um, they're going to focus on health and wealth. All right, bro. Appreciate you. Thanks. Okay, bye. 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 So, you know, that's Pete Vargas. He runs all Cardone's events. He runs a lot of big events for um, entrepreneurs and, you know, obviously super good friends with Grant. They got some business ventures together and um, he just invited me to Grant's house and a little event. So it's hard to turn down doing an intimate event, doesn't even cost me anything. So that's, uh, I guess, pretty much what all my schedule gets filled up from is just random calls like that of things. And I'm like, well, I guess I'm available. And this is also too, why I don't fill up my schedule to be like so jam packed because I wanna be able to be open to do things like that. So I guess I'm gonna go see Grant. You know, I want to spend like two hours just kind of going over everything that I learned at Grant Cardone's office last week because I think it's so applicable to what we're already doing and so many of the things that we've done, we've unknowingly done that literally like are on the path to building billion dollar company. The first thing that stuck out to me that he said was, when you find something that works, do it again. Literally nonstop. It's true because like, you know, I always think about trying to do things differently and be, keep it fresh and all this crap. And it's like, literally, if, if it works, you just do it nonstop until it doesn't work. It's like, yeah, we've been running the same TV commercial for three years, <laughs> like it just still works. Another thing Grant said is that you can't really stay small. You know, it's actually becomes easier once you're bigger. And I actually resonated with that because I thought about it when we were small. And I'm like, yeah, you know, back when I started the house flipping company, I'm out there going to flips. I'm out there going to freaking raise money, find deals. I'm having to do everything. And the moment things got bigger, it got easier. I was like, I work less. And Grant said the same thing. He's like, today I work way less than I've ever worked in my life. You can't afford to play small because playing small is actually harder. It's less profitable. It's more work. And you're gonna get passed. I understand why he thinks the way he thinks now with just 10Xing everything. Whatever your goal is, 10X it. You know, if our goal is to make, you know, whatever, say a company's goal is 10 million, what would it look like to be at 100 million? Like, think about that. And you start thinking differently, you're like, okay, if we had to go for 100 million, what would we have to do differently? And you start thinking through the problem and you're like, okay, that means we need to you know, have these departments, okay? The product we currently sell is not enough. There's not, we could not sell enough of this to get to 100 million. So like, what would the product look like to get there? And so you start processing it in your mind of what it would look like. And then you say, you're able to say, 
okay, I mean, like, that that is the path to get to 100 million. Like, you know, execution is the only thing that's preventing it from being there. And he always thinks about being controversial. He's like, you need 50% of the world to hate you, like literally hate you, in order to take it to the next level and be huge. He's like, if you wanna be the president, 50% of the people need to hate you for you to be the president. He's like, if everyone just thinks you're an okay guy and they have no opinion about you either way, you're never gonna get big. Nobody's big doing that. You know, you look at LeBron, you either love him or hate him. You look at Brady, you love him or hate him. Any of these guys, there is no guy that's just universally beloved by everybody, right? You look at Jesus, you know, that's what it is. Let's talk about the second half of what I learned with Mr. Cardone. And I also started to wonder, why do these other guys I know, like Ed Milet, you know, buy, why are they buying these 20, $40 million properties on the beach? You know, why would Cardone buy one of those properties? Those don't make sense, cash flow. And it's like, literally, there are only, call it 20 properties on that beach ever. They ain't going away. These are like scarce properties that will never, you can't buy it. And they're one of a kind. And I was just like, it makes sense why they buy that because they're, they're willing to put their money there to store it for value. Because at some point, some rich guy knows he's gonna wanna live on that beach and there's no other way he can live on that beach. There's only 20 properties that could actually live on that beach and um, 19 people don't wanna sell because they're rich too and they don't give a crap. You know, at the end of the day, what do you gotta give up? And you know, when I look at my life, to get to the part of my life I'm at today. I've always had to give up things to get there, you know? And so, for instance, when I started flipping couches, you know, I gave up <laughs> kind of like my pride. I'm like, dude, I'm just gonna do this, like whatever. And it ended up being really good. And, you know, I gave it up and had success, right? Then I realized, okay, for me to actually be a great house flipper, I've got to give up flipping couches. And that wasn't like an easy thing because you know, as, as many of you know, like that was my day job. And so it's like, man, are you willing to give up your income and your only stream of income to like pursue this new thing? Like I, how many of us have been there before, right? Like it's not easy giving up that, that thing that is your safety net. Then I realized that social media was something that I had to pursue. I thought it was gonna be this enormous thing and I had to give up something though. It's not like I can just go start making content tomorrow and like my life will be the same. It's like, no, what happened was, you know, I had to give up like working full time with Home Run Offer as our guy who closed all the deals and talked to all the wholesalers and, you know, went on appointments. Like that financially hurt us a lot because I had to go train my replacement. He's not gonna be as good as me. He's not the guy on TV. It's like, I had to give it up. And I said, you know what? Even if this loses me six figures a month that we could have made, had I stayed in this, I believe in order for me to get to the next level, this is what I have to do. And I was willing to make that sacrifice. And, and obviously it worked out really well, quicker than I thought, but I knew going into that sacrifice, I, I was like, I gotta give it up. And if it takes me years to finally break through, I know in the long run, it was the right decision.